a long time ago in a galaxy, um, right here, we've got a new video. So we got Star Wars out now, and it's pretty good, but we also have Christmas just around the corner. So basically, this is my Star Wars Christmas special. His son, Lumpy. What the heck was that? Oh dear gob, no. We are not having a bunch of Wookiees screaming in this Star Wars Christmas special. No, we are not. In this Star Wars Christmas special, we will discuss a few prehistoric and non-prehistoric animals named after Star Wars, which there is a surprisingly large amount of, one of which is an actually new and interesting discovery. So sorry dudes, that Mothman Flatwoods Monster video will have to be on hold for now. Well, the Star Wars Christmas special of this channel is happening, and that's, I guess, more important. Now, this was going to handle only prehistoric Star Wars-inspired organisms, but guess what? There's only two, and one's kinda interesting, and the other's, besides its namesake, not too interesting. So, to compensate, and because I'm not only a paleobiology expert, but I try to be an all-over biology expert, I thought I might highlight some modern non-extinct Star Wars animals, too. So, without further ado, bring on the Star Wars. Number 1, Xenocurex Amidale. Now with all the amazing scientific discoveries of 2015, frickin' dragons, more giant raptors, liquid water on Mars, one can easily overlook the little discoveries. Xenocurex is a prime example of a neat discovery that was overlooked by most people. Xenocurex is known from a few cranial remains such as horns and teeth, and was just discovered a few days ago, like 10 days ago from today, in Spain. Now we know from its remains, strangely, Xenocurex had three horns one of which being a large T-shaped horn, seemingly unique to Xenocurex. It paints a very bizarre picture of an animal from not really that long ago. Xenocurex lived during the Miocene, a time just before the beginning of the Ice Age and just before the early evolution of humans, and for the most part it would appear a lot like modern day Earth, with easily recognizable bears, beavers, deers, cats, and whales, but many strange extinct organisms dwelled the Earth during this time period too, like the massive caiman Purosaurus in South America, and the false gharial Ramphrosuchus, which inhabited modern day India, and yes, the even very overhyped Mega Piranha of South America. Wow, all these cool animals during the Miocene need their own video. Anyways, there is also a bizarre looking group of mammals in Eurasia called Paleoamersids, a strange group of deer-like animals with three horns. Xenocurx, of course, belonging to this group. Now, the Eurasian Paleoamersids might look like they are close relatives of the North American Dromomerysids, another strange group of three-horned mammals, distant relatives to the deer, as some scientists might have thought, but in reality, Paleoamersids are closer related to giraffes. You can even see this three-horn trait in modern-day giraffes. This was before giraffes evolved their specialized long necks for reaching the tops of trees, and Xenocurx probably look more like a strange-looking deer than what we think of as a giraffe. Based off their behavior and function of their close relatives, the horns probably were used both in combat and for display. Giraffes are famous for using their weird horns to whack each other in the neck over disputes for dominance. The T-shape and giraffe-like horns of Xenocurx probably were used for a similar purpose. I can just picture two of these guys duking it out with their weird headgear. Now the name of this guy is kind of interesting. I can just picture a bunch of guys in a boardroom looking at these bits and pieces saying, hey, so we got a giraffe relative with three horns, one of which looks like a cool crown? What do we name it after? Uh... Star Wars? Really? I guess Xenocurix was that big giraffe-like thing that shoved its butt in our faces in the special edition version of New Hope, completely obscuring our vision and taking us out of the immersion. Holy crap, I hate the changes George Lucas put into the special edition. Well, anyways, Xenocurix Amidale is named after Star Wars, but not even the good Star Wars. The prequels. Ah. The name translates to Alien Crown Amidala. You know, that Amidala? What? You know that extremely memorable character from the prequels? Because they sort of look similar? Not really? I don't know, scientists. This naming seems a little weird. Nevertheless, an interesting animal just discovered not too long ago. Number 2. Han Solo. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Genius Han Solo species. Oh crap, I can't wait to see what these scientists use their only chance to name an animal scientifically Han Solo. This better be good. Maybe they're gonna name it after like a ferocious raptor to symbolize the intense combat capabilities and predator skill of Han. 
or like a massive pterosaur that could symbolize the smuggler transporter attributes of the character in the ship he flies. What? That's it? A trilobite? Really? Really just a trilobite? Not even one of the cool ones at that? I'll tell you one thing, this guy's not a Wallaceraps. Alright, well Han Solo, jeez, was a species of trilobite, jeez, that lived during the Middle Ordovician, a time when fish were not really a thing yet, and giant squid-like cephalopods called ornithocones patrolled the seas alongside giant sea scorpions. Jeez, they could have named those after Han Solo. Yeah, this was a weird time, wasn't it? Oh, you want to know what the heck a trilobite is? Well, for starters, a trilobite is an arthropod, a large, large group that contains every invertebrate with a hard exterior shell. Trilobites are close relatives of crabs, insects, eurypterids, and many others. Trilobites were basically the fish before the evolution of fish. They inhabited the entire ocean and filled like thousands of different roles, from abyssal corpse scavengers at the bottom of the ocean to filter feeders swimming in the open ocean. They were everywhere, in one of the most diverse groups in history, and one of the longest lasting. Over 270 million years, from the early Cambrian to the late Permian, the explosion to the great dying. Few living things can survive that long in such a dangerous and competitive world. Kinda like Han Solo. No, not that Han Solo, the other one. Han Solo was just another small, basically insignificant crab crawling on the sea floor. Pretty pathetic Han Solo. Han Solo, the trilobite, was a member of Agnostida, a group of trilobites that lived in the benthic zone at the bottom of the ocean, where the light never reaches. Because of this, Han Solo and related species completely lacked eyes, were not well suited for swimming, and lived in areas in perpetual darkness. Sounds exactly like Han Solo to me. <coughs> oh, and they were often found within other organisms like sponges, worm tubes, and bivalve arthropods basically acting as parasites. Well, okay, that does sound like the real Han Solo. Maybe not the living within other organisms part. <coughs> Han Solo, the fossil, was nothing more than a parasite that scavenged for resources in the cold abyss of space. I, I mean the ocean, I mean space. Wow, this actually does sound like Han Solo. Good job, paleontology. Spoil alert, Han Solo dies. Yes, Han Solo became extinct during the late Ordovician. Awkward. Number 3. Pecolcia Greedo E. Lake Amadala, this guy was also another 2015 discovery, this time of a catfish, and not something that's long dead. An armored catfish, yeah, those things that you know live in other people's fish tanks and are actually absolutely terrifying, yeah, those. Well, just to add to the scariness, we have Pecolcia Greedo E. A really scary looking thing that looks horrible with those terrifying glassy eyes that stare into your soul. And the good news is, this guy isn't dead, still watching you when you sleep. Greedo E was named after, well, Greedo from the Star Wars, due to his remarkable resemblance to the character. And well, yeah, good job, scientists. Anyways, Greedo E was discovered in the Garupi River drainage of Brazil, and is pretty small, eats algae, and lives in shallow, rocky rivers in quieter water environments where they hide inside the cavities of submerged logs. Sounds a lot like the real Greedo to me. Due to its recent discovery, not much is known about this guy, but it probably isn't too different from the Pecolcia that live in your aquarium. But still, that leaves the question, who shot first, greedo -y or Han Solo? Let's find out. Well, because Han Solo has no eyes and probably would never have seen the light of the sun, I don't think he even knows what the heck he's doing here, more or less who Greedo is, or even how to shoot a gun. Then again, greedo -y was a catfish that doesn't have fingers and normally just sucks on logs and rocks. I guess neither one shot first because they can't even shoot. Well, there you have it. A weirdo queen giraffe relative, an eyeless parasitic smuggler, a catfish that is a part-time bounty hunter. Nothing says Christmas more than this. Well then, Merry Christmas. Oh, and watch Force Awakens. It's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. It's got the King of Mars in it. Lovecraftian deities, a guy named Finn. It was basically Adventure Time as a live action movie. And don't forget, Merry Christmas and be prepared for the next video. Thanks for watching. Slime Princess, you're alright. Flame Princess.